preparing for success under the new Trump administration, starting January 20th, right, can give government contractors a strategic edge in the federal space as you navigate the, the shifts in federal spending and the priorities that are clearly going to happen, right? And if you want to be successful in 2025, then this training is for you. It's me trying to line up, what can you do to plan for success in 2025? What can you do right now, November, December of 2024? Change is inevitable, right? Some people will make it happen. Some people will watch it happen. And some people will say what happened. But no matter what, that change is going to happen. And I want you to be one of those people making change happen, right? I want you to sit there and really think about how you can sit there and, and uh, embrace what's about to happen in the change of administration, change is normal in the federal government. And with a little planning, you can go really far towards your success goals for 2025. And so today we're going to be diving into planning for government contractors in 2025 in that Trump administration that's about to come in. I'm going to break down the training into three main sections. First thing is I just want to talk about um, how you can align or anticipate and align uh, these changing priorities that are going to be coming under the Trump administration in 2025. President-elect Trump has uh, some clear agenda uh, items that he's going to focus on, and he's got that across all the federal agencies. If you're, if you're not overly familiar with this, the President of the United States has control over all the executive branches. And so this whole executive branch will fall under the Trump administration. We want to understand what are those priorities in those agencies and how can we align what we do to those agencies or maybe those agencies aren't a fit for us. The second thing I'm going to talk about is um, how to align your strategy with the anticipated spending trends so that you can stay competitive going into 2024. Um, I did So this topic that I'll talk about today aligns to a full training I did two days ago on spending in the Trump administration going into 2025. So go take a look at that one after this training to get a broader picture. And then I'm gonna wrap up with my recommendations on what you should be thinking about doing to be able to um, you know, just control the impact of the changing priorities that are gonna happen with the new administration. You can control what's gonna happen going forward. Stephen Covey, uh, he writes a book called Seven Habits for Highly Effective People. And um, if you haven't read this book, one of the habits, um, oh, that's funny. I, I, sorry, I just lost it completely. But there's this whole idea he talks about a circle of concern, this huge big circle in our lives. And then inside that circle is something called the circle of influence. And so the whole idea of circle of influence is this is what I can impact. This is what I can change. An example is I can decide which federal agencies I'm going to pursue. I cannot and I have no influence on what the agencies are doing but I can look at the agencies and decide which one I'm going to knock on, which ones I'm going to go in and try to sell to, right? And my circle of concern are all those things that I think about, uh, oh my gosh, spending is going to be this way or whatever, right? I can see all those things, but I can't really influence them at all. And so the, the idea is when you look at all these things that concern you, we're not saying don't, don't be concerned, but if you want to proactively plan for success in 2025 as a government contractor, then you want to zoom in on your circle of influence. And some of us have a smaller circle of influence to begin with, uh, but you can begin to go forward. Actually, I just saw a chat from um, uh, somebody talking about your visibility score. I'll talk about that in a minute, but that's an area of influence that you have and you have control over it. So if you don't know me, my name is Neil McDonald. I'm the president of the GovCon Chamber of Commerce, co-founder and CEO of GovCon in a Box. And I wanna welcome you to my federal sales training where I provide tips for success in the federal market. I spent 20 years in the federal market as a small business owner. And since 2018, I've been teaching people like you that government contracting is not a secret. It's just a process. When we follow a process A to Z, we have repeatable, predictable results. And that's what I want you to have in 2025. It's why I do this training over and over again. If you haven't already subscribed to our newsletter, subscribe to Government Contracting Success Newsletter. If you are a subscriber, do me a favor, a little thank you for the training that we do send the newsletter out to other people and say, hey, you should subscribe to this newsletter. That way they get access to the newsletter, but they also hear about future trainings we do. This is how we build our community. Speaking of building our community, on the right-hand side, you can see we've got networking um, on November 25th. I hope you can join us. It's a virtual networking event. We are really doubling down on this. People get a lot of value of coming together virtually and meeting other people. This is how you uh, begin to build relationships. It starts with networking and just meeting people. 
Then you identify the ones that are good strategic relationships later. But uh, the more we come together, the more we're able to help each other succeed. Um, I, I didn't get a chance to update this uh, list from, from uh, the most recent people on, but I'll do that on Tuesday when I'm back. Uh, but I did want to congratulate all the clubs, uh, all the companies that are in the 100 Club. If you haven't gone to GovCon in a Box, then I encourage you to go to GovConInABox.com to get your federal visibility score. This goes back to that circle of influence I was talking about. You can influence whether the federal buyer can find you. And the federal visibility score that we created is saying, how visible are you to federal buyers in the tools that they look in? Not in our proprietary tool or something. We just give you a free way to understand how visible are you to the federal buyers. And if you're basically invisible, we tell you exactly what you need to do to become visible. Um, there's really no reason you shouldn't be in there and, and uh, making sure you're, um, you're visible. So congratulations to the clubs that are the companies that are in the 100 club. Okay, uh, before I dive into the, the first part about talking about priorities, I did want to back up for a second and just make sure I'm somebody out there that is helping you understand the success that you want in 2025 is totally possible. There's nothing that's going to stop it. There might be things that change how you thought you would get there. But if you're here and you want to be here, the only thing that might change is the path. You know, so instead of going right, you might go left or something, but you can have the success you want. And the reason I put this slide up and let me go ahead and hide myself and just maximize this slide for a second. Um, if you look at this slide, what it shows is from uh, the various earliest time with uh, President Obama um, administration through the first President Trump into President Biden. What you can see is the government never stops spending. The only time we had a dip and that dip is because of a drawdown basically from war. Uh, but for the most part, the contracting has happened. Um, and if you look at small business in this same diagram, which I could have done if I was nice, um, you would see a similar type pattern because uh, small businesses had far less of the war contracting dollars. And, and for us, it's more CONUS or continental United States, the 48 United States. Um, so anyways, I just want you to understand when you look at this, this graphic here, and this is coming from USA spending data, when you look at this graphic, you can see that spending happens and it always happens. Now it's just a matter of aligning what you sell with the agency that wants to buy what you sell. So let's get started talking about um, how you can anticipate these priority changes that are going to be changing, right? What are, what are the Trump administration priorities that are going to happen? Some of them we already understand and we see them coming out there. We can kind of get a a, like a forecasted look of what's coming. Others um, will be able, be able to anticipate as we start getting closer to January 20th and in, in uh, the first 100 days, which I'll come to in a second. But the th one thing I wanted to just point out, I teach the seven-step process to federal success, federal revenue success, right? I want you to be successfully making money. That's the only reason, that's the reason we're in business, right? If we're in a for-profit business, we're here to make money. Yes, we can do all sorts of good in the community, but that doesn't happen unless we're making money. Otherwise, we're just you know in a, in a volunteer's place. And so the first thing is for us to look at the, the path to revenue success. And that's why I define the seven-step process. When you think about aligning your uh, company to the priorities of the administration coming in, the Trump administration coming in, it begins with the first step of the seven-step process. And this is research. Research is about understanding your agency. In this particular case, I want you to actually back up for a second all the way to the entire executive branch, basically the entire federal government, and understand um, where the Trump administration is going. What are the major priorities? From that, you want to begin to zero in down to an agency. And I'll talk about that more in a minute. But this idea of take a holistic picture, understand your customer. Right. The, the executive branch is your customer. You're going to sell to them. So do the research it takes to get in there and understand what their priorities are. Some of the ways you can uh, do that research and, and begin to anticipate those changes that are coming and plan for them in 2025. Some of the ways you can do that are are listed here. Right. So the first example I have is um, the first hundred days. If you if you're not familiar with this, every president who comes in. Uh, they have a first 100 day plan. They're like, in the first 100 days, we want to get this done, right? Not we want to start this, but they um, all of them want to get uh, something done in the first 100 days. We're here, we're in charge, we're going to get things done. And so you want to anticipate what those are. 
Um, pretty soon, they will literally, the Trump administration will literally put out um, what they want to get done in the first 100 days. And then you will also see that spread across different agencies. Like if there's a secretary of the VA coming in, what are their 100 day priorities that align to President elect Trump's priorities? And so looking at what they're talking about around the 100 days will help you anticipate um, which agencies and, and uh, what's being bought align to what you do. The second thing I'm going to be watching out for, and I encourage you to watch out for, is executive orders. Uh, executive orders are basically where uh, President-elect Trump will come in, and every president does this. He'll come in and sit there and say, it shall be this, <laughs> right? Whatever that is. And, and I don't really care what the orders are. I want you to research those orders. I want you to pay attention. All you have to do is um, uh, pay attention to what um, the Trump administration is saying before January 20th. And then on January 20th, uh, if you're not familiar with this, the White House has a website. The website will be archived for the Biden administration and a new website will immediately come up. And in there is where a lot of this stuff will be communicated. And so you will be able to see these executive orders that are put out there. Those executive orders, it doesn't take you long. In fact, take it, copy it, drop it into chat GPT and say, hey, does this matter to me? <laughs> so let chat GPT summarize it for you. But you want to read it. I will look at every single one myself to say, how's it impact me? How's it impact my uh, customers? The next one you want to be paying attention to um, are the FY 2025 budget. So if you're not familiar with the budget, we currently don't have a budget, right? So we're in FY 2025, the first quarter, started October 1st. And the budget uh, approval process has been pushed down the road with something called a continuing resolution until, until December 20th. And, and it'll probably be kicked down the road again. Um, but the idea is that the current budget in play, FY 2025, so now to the uh, September 30th, 2025, that budget was written by the Biden administration. But it's going to be covering the Trump administration as he comes in in 20, uh, January 20th. And so um, you want to look at that budget, see what's going on in there that aligns to you, right? You don't have to read everything, but if you do cyber, if you do construction or something, look in there and see what's going on. And then what I want you to pay attention to is what's going to begin to happen in January, because um, that budget in itself, things could go up, <laughs> up in the air, right? This is the challenge the agencies have is like, what's going to be the reality of the budget? So you want to pay attention to 25's budget to see what might change now that it will be... Uh, 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 the Trump administration in the White House and Republicans in the House where the budget is being uh, you know, discussed back and forth between the president and the, and the House, um, those uh, folks have control over the dollars. And so pay attention to that and also pay attention to the FY26 budget. Um, these things, this is continuing learning, right? This is what you should be doing if you want millions of dollars from the federal government is understand your customer. And the 2026 budget, FY26 budget, has already started being put in play, but it's being put in play by the Biden administration. And now we've got a Trump administration. So there could be changes in there. And that could be really helpful if you're able to see some of the early stuff. And then you see uh, what's being put out after January 20th. You can see the shifting in the priorities and you can begin to align it to what you do. The last thing I have here is just uh, strategic plans. The federal agencies have four year strategic plans out there. Some agencies try to update them uh, annually, but most of them have a four-year strategic plan that gets put in place with the new administration. So right now there's a strategic plan and you can go in there and see some of these priorities um, and, um, and, and watch because as soon as the new administration comes in and we start getting leaders across all the different federal agencies, they will start putting out strategic plans and that will signal to us very clearly what their strategic goals are, the priorities, what their objectives are and how they're going to measure themselves for success, not just as the administration and, and, and things you might hear from the White House, but more specifically the things you might hear from different agencies. Um, understanding these strategic plans and kind of comparing them will help you. The comparison will help you see the shift and understanding the new strategic plans, reading them and really absorbing uh, what's being said in there. Those will help you create a strategic plan for your own company. Okay, I know we got a lot here, uh, by the way, and I continuously do this training. You can go find replays on training I've done on how to look at strategic plans, how to analyze them and read them. Uh, but this is a skill set, right? If you're going to do a new skill, like if you're going to um, go dancing and you're going to learn swing dancing for a second, right? If I just use that, 
Um, swing dancing begins with just, you know, step, step, step. Uh, you know, you kind of go side to side and then you get a little fancy and you go step, step, rock step. It's like, what's that rock step? And, you know, and then you do some turns and eventually you're flipping people over or something, right? There's advanced skills in dancing and there's advanced skills in government contracting sales. And understanding um, our customer is one of the main ones. We could take the time, right? You might not be that expert, that much of an expert at it today, but if you keep looking at this information, pretty soon, if you're familiar with the matrix, the matrix stops looking like a bunch of computer code and it starts looking like a steak or something. All right, so on this slide, I put in, um, I, I kind of piggyback off training from Tuesday, um, the 12th of November, where I talked about what's the anticipated federal spending uh, in 2025 with the Trump administration coming in. And there's clear things out there. Um, so I want you to go watch that whole replay uh, but I just wanted to quickly talk about this from two ways, right? I look at the budget and I look at the spending as a government contractor, as a person who uh, advises my customers on government contracting, where they should be looking. And these are the things I observe, right? The Department of Education, Department of, um, or the Environmental Protection Agency. These are a couple of agencies that are what I call at risk. Um, the current, the administration coming in, they're not big fans of them. IRS has this huge budget that got allotted to them. And the Trump administration has a clear goal to reduce that budget in the IRS, which doesn't just impact the agents that they planned on uh, hiring to be able to process taxes, but also for all of the rest of us who do administrative support or facility cleaning or IT or any of these things that support the overall mission of an agency when the agency's mission budget gets cut or its people um, are reduced in, in number, then um, that impacts all of the rest of us. So understanding it. Department of Labor, uh, the, even just the 2025 budget right now has a 22% uh, cut recommended in there. That's huge. And so this is why I always say, take a look at this stuff. I'm not trying to give you all the factual information. I'm trying to give you enough information that you go do your own research on, let's say the Department of Labor, pull up 2025's budget and you will see 23, 24, 25. And, and now if you pull up 26, you'll see it. You'll begin to see this trend. Um, HHS has got a cut of $7 billion if that budget goes through. Um, Department of Justice, this is a huge one where uh, the Trump administration is communicating that they're looking at FBI, ATF, uh, the U.S. attorneys and kind of reducing that footprint. These are things you want to pay attention to. On the flip side, the increases that you'll be able to see and pretty much guarantee there's going to be an increase on the spending on the Department of Defense side. That's a really big a uh, deal that's out there and, and and the Trump administration believes in this. You can watch my training from yesterday, uh, the 13th of November and that training replay here on LinkedIn. You can find that training and I talk about agencies at a much broader level. Um, but anything to do with border protection, immigration control, all that, uh, all that part of the agenda that the Trump administration has communicated, um, that is spending is going to go up. They're going to double down on the infrastructure across the board and really try to get projects moving out there. Um, domestic manufacturing, that was happening in the Biden administration, but it's going to be, you know, kind of doubled down in the in the Trump administration. This is pulling manufacturing back. By the way, something I saw that I'll dig more into, right? I don't want to pretend like I've got all the facts yet, but I did see uh, um, things that signal to me that the Trump administration is going to be looking at government contracts and seeing that the contracts are being done mostly by um, American-based uh, employees. And that's a big shift from uh, this idea of offshoring. What do they call it? Nearshoring or offshoring. And so those are things to pay attention to. I'm not saying any of this to say uh, it's something you got to watch out for. I mean, excuse me, that's exactly what I'm saying. Not to do fear mongery or something, but to say, hey, if that's happening, that's something that should be paying attention to. But I do believe there's a big staff augmentation need coming up because I think there's going to be a lot of changes in there and the government still has to execute their mission. But I think there's going to be a little bit of uh, you know, turmoil around internal government employees that might be a, an, a, you know, an option for government contractors to do staffing, hiring, recruiting, training, retention, all that kind of stuff. OK, I, I really wanted to get to this slide. We got seven minutes left. Um, I want to share these tips. And, and these are not every tip I have. These are just the tips I'm starting with. Um, here at the end of, as we go into the end of November and you start thinking about this, uh, by the way, don't wait for 2025. Everything I want you to do is today, 
right? You start today, you don't have to work 24 seven, but you do have to start thinking about things today. The government is thinking about where they're going and this is, um, and this is what we need to do is look at it. So my first tip for you is to really reevaluate what you sell. And I don't mean, uh, should we sell something else? I mean, make sure you understand what you sell. Uh, I, I see companies all the time, right? I interact with probably over a thousand companies a month minimum. And when I look around at what people sell, sometimes we sell too much. And I want you to reevaluate what you sell against two things. One is the ability to niche that down to something smaller. An example is uh, if I was gonna create a social media company, I would sit there and say, well, I'm not just creating a social media company, I'm gonna niche it down to LinkedIn because that's what we're experts at. And I'm gonna double down on going after that. So that's what I mean is look at what you sell. The other thing is align it to what they need. So to make sure that what you sell is not something that's gonna go away. An example of something that may be this way is in the new Trump administration, there's probably gonna be less of a focus on a, a alternative fuel or energy um, and more focus on I don't know, oil or whatever, right? I don't, I don't know the energy world. And so if I'm selling uh, alternative energy, I really need to reevaluate what's their agenda, what are they doing and, and how's that aligned to what I sell. This, so once you do that and you got your niche, the second thing I want you to do is identify the agency that is most likely to buy what you sell. So an example for me, if I say I'm going to do social media and I'm going to do LinkedIn, why am I double down on DOD? Because I know DOD has a really strong push to increase the defense supplier base, the industrial suppliers or industrial base, right? Uh, the DIB, defense industrial base. And so basically small business suppliers, et cetera. I know they really want to uh, grow it. I know that because they reach out to me and ask me to help reach you. And um, so I will look at those agencies and go, well, which ones in DOD might care more? And I want you to do that for what you sell. Who's buying what I sell? Who really will double down on construction, right? I talk about infrastructure. What if you do building construction or road construction? That type of thing. Um, third thing I want you to do is identify and learn from these incoming leaders. So you have... Uh, President-elect Trump, leader of the executive branch, the president of the United States, he'll be our main customer, right? Think about the executive branch as one business and you got a CEO at the top. You got a lot of presidents, you know, is what we call it, president of, uh, of these different departments. Well, in this case, it's the secretary of defense is a president of the defense or something, right? If you think about it, just like a commercial entity. So you've got these leaders coming down. Who is Who are President-elect Trump's direct reports? These are the next group of leaders. And so let's say you look at um, Department of Veterans Affairs and John Smith is being announced as being the Secretary of uh, Veterans Affairs. It's like perfect, but Veterans Affairs has uh, the Health Administration, the Benefits Administration and the Cemetery. Well, who are coming in there? I wanna begin to learn who these people are. There's gonna be hundreds, if not thousands of political appointees just in the VA. I wanna look in there and begin to see what they're saying. Uh, I wanna understand what their priorities are. Uh, there's one thing to hear what they say pre-election or something, right? But it's another thing once they uh, are nominated and they start moving forward and they start getting closer to January 20th. And then after the, um, uh, uh, <laughs> I almost said nomination, I'm losing my word, but after January, uh, the inauguration um, on January 20th, after that happens, right? There's things we can listen to. So you want to find out who these incoming leaders are, listen to them. Um, it'll help you understand how to, plan for it. Fourth thing is build new GovCon relationships. And when I say GovCon, I mean with uh, small businesses, with large businesses and federal agencies. I talk about this uh, in a lot of training. You can watch the replay, but build some new relationships in there. And um, you want to build these relationships right now in November, in December. Don't write off uh, any day except for Thursday for Thanksgiving, for example, right? Don't write off Friday. <laughs> if you're trying to build a business, especially if you're an entrepreneur, right? If you're an employee, take the day off. You deserve it. But if you're an entrepreneur and you're a small business owner, right? We should be working to try to identify who we can build relationships with in an agency so that we have people to talk to. And I wrote here, build these relationships in 24 so you can talk to them uh, all going into 2025. And I have all sorts of training again on how to do that. It's literally what the workshop is that I do. Uh, the workshop is where we help people do it, but I train you how to do it for free. And so you can find it out there. Um, schedule these customer meetings out there. If you already have government contracts, I want you to go schedule meetings with your current customers and just get a feeling for, hey, how do you feel? <laughs> What's going to happen? Uh, how stable is my contract? I got 
three more option years. Do you think they're stable, not stable? What are your thoughts? Some of these people might not be able to answer, but you want to start having the conversations. Can we get on a monthly call? 15 minutes, just touch base. So that way, as the Trump administration begins its term, that um, that we can touch base as you learn new things and um, and we can make sure that our contracts are, you know, just we understand what's going on. We can anticipate what's going on with our contracts. But if you have contracts, make sure you're meeting with your KO, your core, whoever on a monthly basis, even for five to 15 minutes. Um, and then the four, second to last one here, identify areas for efficiency and cost savings. What I mean by this is speak the government's language, speak the Trump administration language. Across the board, the government always wants efficiency and cost savings. But you can double down on this language saying, hey, how can I look at what I sell? And it doesn't matter what you sell. How can I look at it from an efficiency standpoint? How, do this, how does the government get it uh, more efficiently? Or how do we deliver the process and the services more efficiently? And how do I reduce the cost? Right? These are things that are very important to the Trump administration. It should be very important to you. But more importantly, tactically, you want to speak their language, the, the government or the customer's language, to be able to align with them. And that's that last bullet. Okay, I'm running out of time here. I only got one minute left. Here's what I want you to remember from today's training, because I like ending on time. First off, contracts are going to flow. No matter what happens, the government's going to keep spending. You just got to find where's the path to your uh, destination. The second thing is create a 2025 sales strategy. I, I do a lot of training on this about how you can create a strategy today in November and December so that 2025, you're following your own strategy. You're not reacting uh, to whatever might uh, change in the Trump administration, but you've got a plan. And last thing is build relationships inside the government with uh, other companies that are winning as well as government employees to make sure you stay in the know. One of those ways you can build the relationships are uh, our networking events. So come to our virtual networking event on 11-25, November 25th. Um, love to have you there. So just go to govcon in a box slash or dot com slash networking and somebody will put the link into the chat and you can learn more about it. If you'd like my help as you're going into 2024, we have a BD Accelerator workshop. Put workshop into the chat and we'll follow up as soon as we get a chance to talk to you more about it. I need you to be like a million or two million plus because there is a price to it. Um, and you need to be at a certain stage for us to be able to help you. Otherwise, just keep coming back to our training. All right, I'm out of time. I will see you in the next training. Remember, government contracting it is not a secret. It's just a process.